And there I was. I was the girl from Suits. This one's wife. They will bring down the monarchy. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. There are some people that think that the role of this one's wife and Harry has been to bring down the monarchy. Some say that this is a consequence of being in league with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, as they are apparent anti-monarchists. There are others that believe that somehow there is a link between this one's wife and Harry and the CIA, so that they are utilised as agents that are there to stifle free speech and look at bringing down the British monarchy. Quite why the CIA would be interested in bringing down an institution which doesn't wield anything other than soft power is anybody's guess, but there we are. Nevertheless, there are those that seek to rally behind this one's wife and Harry as potential symbols of bringing down the monarchy. I've explained previously that when it comes to this one's wife, people are divided into three groups these days. A substantial group of people who are, yes, I know about her, but I'm not interested. She has no real impact on my life. I'm not interested in the vacuous lifestyle of this individual. Then there is a growing number of individuals who simply can't stand her. This is as a consequence of her behaviour and regularly speak out about her. Some are so moved to even create content about her, criticising the various things that she says and does. Then there is a third group, her supporters. For those that don't like this one's wife, they're often mystified as to why certain individuals would actually support her, given the fact that there is plenty of evidence available which demonstrates that she is a narcissist, that she's not a particularly pleasant person, that she's a hypocrite, that she's a bully, and so on and so forth. Thus, people are left scratching their heads. Why would somebody support them? Well, in relation to those supporters who are dwindling in number, you can divide them into two distinct groups. There are those that show a slavish devotion to this one's wife because they simply will not accept that they were wrong about her. They nailed their colours to a particular mast and they're going to die on that hill. Whilst privately they may have some reservations about what she's done, the fact is they would rather continue to support somebody whose behaviours they can sometimes see are unpleasant rather than do a vault fast and admit that they were wrong. Furthermore, in and around that group, there are some who simply don't see it, that they're so entrenched in their view that the royal family are hateful and racist and are colonial imperialists, etc., that they continue to believe that this one's wife, despite the evidence being to the contrary, is somebody who is on their side. They live vicariously through her, believing that she has attained something that they would wish that they could for themselves, not realising that this one's wife wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. The other section that supports her are those that basically have a vested interest in doing so because they can get something out of this one's wife, whether it's that they're employed by her, whether it's because they want to promote something and they can utilise her infamy to do so, or whether it's because she serves a political purpose, they support her not because they like her, but she's simply useful to them. And we have an excellent example here of how a particular group supports her because basically she represents something that fits with what they want to achieve. GB News reports via Jack Walters. This one's wife and Prince Harry helped change the tide in popular opinion against the royal family a Republican supporting academic has claimed. Now, pausing there, popular opinion, if you look at any of the recent polls, suggests that the royal family remain popular, that there are more people support them than don't, save, of course, for three notable individuals, Prince Harry, this one's wife, and Prince Andrew. But popularity levels for the King, for Princess Anne, for Prince William... For Catherine, Princess of Wales, they remain high. They're good also for the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. 
Accordingly, to suggest that there is a change of tide in popular opinion against the royal family is not actually borne out by the polls. Nevertheless, Lancaster University's Dr Laura Clancy made a series of staggering comments about support for the firm at Labour for a Republic's Fringe event in Liverpool recently. It has been the Labour Party conference in Liverpool, which of course attracts lots of various events, which includes this one about Labour for a Republic. Another panellist at this event claimed it's only a matter of time before the United Kingdom opts to become a republic, with support for the monarchy plummeting among young Britons. Dr Clancy, who penned Running the Firm in 2021, also argued that popular support for the royals dipped following the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Well, it may well be the case that it dipped f f as, after all, QE2 is a difficult act to follow, but that doesn't mean that it becomes unpopular. She stated, since the Queen died, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I've never asked as many questions about royal wealth or funding. It rocketed. The tide is certainly starting to change with a king who is not as popular, who doesn't have the same links the Queen had to World War II and a very British sense of nostalgia that we seem to have. That is starting to change the discourse slightly. I think what has also changed the discourse is other things happening in the family. Harry and this one's wife changed the conversation. They brought in questions about gender and race which hadn't previously been discussed, certainly not to the level that they brought those questions in. Now, to my mind, this is an entirely deluded view. To suggest that what is happening is that the monarchy has become unpopular and that this one's wife and Harry have changed the tide in that regard is errant nonsense. But this demonstrates once again how this Dr Clancy supports Harry and this one's wife because she sees it as something that supports her arguments. She wants a republic, and therefore, because Harry and this one's wife have been problematic and that they've broken away from the royal family, she, they gain this academic support, not because they're worth supporting of their own right, but because it fits with what this academic wants to achieve. And thus she attempts to shoehorn into her argument the suggestion that this one's wife and Harry have changed the discourse, that they have brought in questions about gender and race. Well, the point is this. They haven't brought in questions about gender. After all, longest reigning monarch was a woman. The second longest reigning woman monarch was a woman. We've had numerous reigning monarchs who are female, so that hasn't changed anything in relation to gender, so that's nonsensical. With regard to race, all that this one's wife did was actually make matters worse for those that are victims of racial prejudice by playing the race card when hitherto she had not done so, by claiming that people had been racist towards her when actually they had not done so, and using another lapdog, Omid Scobie, to peddle lies in the Dutch translation of Bell End Game, and then try and blame the Dutch translator when he was caught out. They haven't brought in any change in relation to a discourse concerning gender or race, other than make matters worse. But once again, this article highlights the way that a supporter of the Sussexes is only a supporter because it suits her agenda, not because there's any objective basis for supporting them. And to suggest that somehow they're going to be instrumental in bringing down the monarchy and turning the tide is nonsense, because simply the polls just don't bear it out. But this is the more deluded claptrap that surrounds one of the most deluded individuals on the planet, this one's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.